All right, in this example, I'm going to do another improper integral. This one's going to be a little trickier. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on in this problem. Again, to get started, though, what do we do? Well, wherever the infinity part is, just replace that with a t. Write the limit as t goes to infinity. And then I've got s e to the negative 5s ds that I have to work on. And because I'm a little lazy, there's a limit, there's a definite integral, I'm just going to kind of off to the side, find the antiderivative for s e to the negative 5s ds. I'm going to work on that, and then at the end, once I calculate it, I'll rewrite it with the limit and the definite, um, with the limits of integration back in there as well. So first off, I have to remember how to integrate s e to the negative 5s. Well, I think, okay, maybe a u substitution would work. Well, if this was s squared, I would get a 2s. That would be good. There's not a lot of algebra you can do. Um, oh, maybe this is one of those integration by parts problems. So we'll let u equal s, dv equal e to the negative 5s. du is just going to be plain old 1 ds. If I integrate e to the negative 5s, I'm going to get negative 1 fifth e to the negative 5s. And two ways to go about doing this one. If you wanted to integrate it the long way, you should do a u substitution with u equals negative 5s. There's a little trick too that if you have e and a variable and just some number, if you divide by whatever number it is, in this case, so I've got I'm dividing by negative five, which is equivalent to multiplying by negative one fifth, that's what the antiderivative will be. So recall our integration by parts formula. It says u d v equals u v minus the integral of v d u. So I'm going to plug all that stuff in here. So it says this integral, I'm going to get u, which is s. So u times v, I'm going to pull my negative 1 fifth out front, e to the negative 5s. And then I'm going to subtract away the integral of v times du. Well, I'm going to pull the negative 1 fifth out front. That'll make it a positive 1 fifth. Then I still have e to the negative 5s, and I have to multiply that by du, which is just plain old ds. So again, now I'm going to integrate this thing. The negative 1 fifth s e to the negative 5s is along for the ride. Again, if I integrate e to the negative 5s, I'm going to get negative 1 fifth e to the negative 5s, just like I did up here. Well, if I take that negative 1 fifth and multiply it by this positive 1 fifth, I'm going to get negative 1 over 25 e to the negative 5s. And, okay, you get plus c, but let's remember the context of this problem. So it says, originally we were trying to figure out this thing. Well, I now know what the antiderivative is. It's all of this stuff. So I'm just going to plug it all back in. I've got the limit as t goes to infinity, negative 1 over 5 s e to the negative 5s minus 1 over 25 e to the negative 5s. And again, I'm still evaluating this from 0 to t. So from 0 to t. All right, so hopefully so far so good. Again, a little tricky. Remembering, like I said, you know, just the integration itself can be a little tedious, like on this one we had to do integration by parts. So let's plug our limits of integration here in and see what happens. So we still have the limit as t goes to infinity. I'm plugging my upper limit in. Everywhere I've got a variable, in this case my variable is s. So I'll get negative 1 fifth t e to the negative 5t. 
minus 1 over 25 e to the negative 5t. That's my upper limit. And then I have to subtract away when I plug in the lower limit, so I'm plugging in 0. Well, if I plug 0 into this term, I'm definitely going to get 0. And then I'm going to have minus 1 over 25. And then I've got e to the 0 in this case. And recall, e to the 0 is just 1. All right, so the question is, again, what we're really trying to figure out, does this integral converge or diverge? So we're trying to figure out, do we get a finite number or not? So let's keep going here. I'm going to simplify it down, find a cleaner piece of paper here. So let's keep going. Let's see if I can squeeze it all in there. So again, I've got, if I simplify it down, I have the limit as t goes to infinity, I've got negative one-fifth t e to the negative 5t minus 1 over 25 e to the negative 5t. My two negatives will make a positive 1 over 25. Okay, so now what's going on with these limits? If you think about the graph of positive e to the x, Remember, e to the x looks like this. So I'm going to think about this second part first. Well, if t is going to infinity, that's equivalent to getting like e to large negative numbers. And if you plug negative numbers into e, it says the limit gets closer and closer to 0. So this limit is actually going to go to 0 as t goes to infinity. All right, well, same thing here. I've got e to the negative 5t. As t goes to infinity, for the same reason, this is going to go to 0. But now t is going to infinity. So what's going on here? Well, we have infinity times 0. And again, you have to be careful. It just says t is getting bigger and bigger, while this is getting closer and closer to 0. Well. Just because you have infinity times 0, don't automatically think it's 0. You've got a big number times a small number. What do you get? Well, it depends on if this number is really big or if this number is really small. And recall in this case, infinity times 0 is one of those improper forms where we can use L'Hopital's rule. So again, off to the side, I'm going to look at the limit as t goes to infinity. I'm going to leave out the negative one-fifth. To me, that just confuses matters. If I get some finite number out for this limit, I'll tag it back in and multiply it by the negative one-fifth. And remember, L'Hopital's rule says if you have an improper product, infinity times zero, or negative infinity times zero, you put one of the things in the denominator. Well, I'm going to put the e in the denominator because that'll change the negative exponent to a positive exponent. So now I have infinity over infinity. And if I use L'Hopital's rule on this, I'll get the limit as t goes to infinity. Well, the derivative of 1 is just 1. The derivative of e to the 5t is 5e to the 5t. And again, as t goes to infinity, I'm going to get e to the infinity, which is infinity. I've got 1 over infinity, which equals 0. So it turns out that this limit up here that was a little confusing at first, actually the infinity times 0 in this case is going to turn out to be 0. So if we go back up here, what are we left with? We have negative 1 fifth times 0. That's what we just justified down here. We just said that this term is going to go to 0. So minus 0. And then I'm left with my plus 1 over 25. So our solution in this problem is just going to work out to be 1 over 25. And we would say that this very original integral is in fact a convergent integral. So